Our church media team has been looking to upgrade the comm system that we use. So today, we're gonna check out the Mars T1000 system from Hollyland. We'll talk about what features we like about it, how easy it is to set up and use every single week, the build quality, the range, and ultimately, if we think this system is a good fit for our church media team to rely on every single Sunday morning. Hi, I'm Dave Dolphin at practicalworshipblog.com, sharing ideas, tips, and practical advice for the worship leader that has to do it all. If you're brand new here and you're someone that's trying to figure out how to do all the little extra things that comes along with leading a worship ministry, hit that subscribe button and the little notification bell right next to it, and you'll never miss another video. On a typical Sunday morning, our church media team has someone running audio, someone running pro presenter and lights, a producer, someone switching the cameras for our live stream, and a stage manager. And all of these people need to be able to communicate with one another so that they can all stay on the same page and communicate any audibles that the senior pastor might throw away. I was already talking to our media pastor, Cameron, about the possibility of upgrading our current comm system when the folks at Hollyland asked if I would be interested in reviewing their Mars T1000 system. And I was like, yes. Yes, I would. So full disclosure, they did send this unit to me for free, but they have not told me what to say. And at the end of the day, the system has to be a good fit and meet all of our needs for us to put it into service full time and rely on it every single Sunday morning. So I'm approaching this review with that in mind. So this is the base station that comes with it here on the front. You've got your power button, then you have the screen that shows you kind of the status of all of the other packs. If they're in mute mode, if they're in talk, you can see the battery levels, you can see the signal strength of the antennas. You also have this button right here where you can mute all the other packs. So if you have like the producer and you have a bunch of uh, cameramen out in the field that are having their, their handheld packs, the, the person that kind of is running the show can mute all of them at once if they need to. And uh, this station actually serves as a place where someone can be on the system as well. You have four packs, but you have five of the headsets and one of those headsets plugs in here. That's the, the, the volume control. On this side is where you have power. You also have this uh, RJ45 jack where you can plug in another system. So you can actually get another one of these systems and have five more people uh, that are in the whole circle. And then on this side, you have a bunch of USB ports. Those are for charging all the packs. And then this uh, USB-C is for uh, being able to do like firmware updates and things like that. This part's pretty cool. It has these little, um, it has a place to put camera batteries, the same batteries you'd use for like cameras and lighting and things like that. So you don't have to plug it in. You can run it off of not one, but two batteries that you probably already have if you're doing a lot of filming. So that's the base station. And then it comes with four of these packs like this. They're super lightweight, but they're strong. Uh, has this clip right here that clips onto your clothing. And uh, what I like about it is um, you got your two antennas here, your volume control, that little jack right there. All the headsets are the standard TRRS kind of connectors, the same ones that you would find for your iPhone. And so any kind of connector like that, whether it be your iPhone earbuds or maybe like Xbox headphones, uh, you're like you're not just limited to the headsets that come with it. There's a lot of options that you can use. And uh, if you know this, iPhone headphones actually need a little bit of electricity. And for the, for the microphone to actually work, it's not quite like phantom power, but it's the same kind of a concept. There's actually a setting in here where you can turn on a little bit of electricity to be able to use headsets that require a little bit of juice for that microphone to work. This button here on the side, um, that is the button that you have to push to talk. It's a little weird how it works. We'll get to that in a second. Let's talk about durability. This is made, this just feels real good in your hands. It's very lightweight. So if you're running around, you don't necessarily feel that you have it, but you can just, you know that whenever you do production work like this, you know that the equipment that you use, you ha it has to be able to take a beating. And I feel like this could take a beating pretty well. That's pretty solid. Even this base station down here, I mean, this is pretty strong metal and it just, it, it, you feel like, you know, like when you feel something, you can tell it's built with quality. Like that's how I feel when I hold this in my hand. I'm really impressed uh, with uh, the build quality on this unit. The headsets, which by the way, I haven't showed you that yet. 
these are the headsets. They are made of plastic, but I feel like they'll 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 hang in there. They seem to do the job. You have the microphone here that can go up and come down. Uh, when you first kind of touch the microphone, it feels kind of flimsy, um, like it's not going to stay where you put it. But it's at it. it it stays just fine. So just messing with this system here in my office, I feel like it's going to work pretty well, but I'm curious what Cameron thinks. I feel like I need to be like, with this kind of case and this kind of hardware, it's it makes you want to be gentle. I was expecting plastic, but it's like, it's metal. Like it's all um, like durable stuff, which is just not like there's good weight to it. Um, and this, like this whole chassis is like, it's metal, it's not, the only plastic things are like the, the knobs and obviously you got the rubber buttons and everything. Um, the switches, like, like it doesn't feel, you know, like consumer in any way whatsoever. I think it's, I think this is gonna be a really like, I think it's gonna feel really lightweight, which is awesome. Um, especially like, so we have a stage manager that is gonna be walking around chasing people down all morning. It's gonna feel really good to have. Well, just even like if I'm the sound guy back there, if I have this huge belt pack, I don't feel like I can do what I need to do. But this is all super lightweight. So now it's time to set everything up in our worship center and put this system through some real world paces. All right, so now I'm curious how ridiculously far we can go with this. We obviously, we only need it to work in this room. Right. Baptistry, that'd be, I'm gonna go to the baptistry. That's a good spot to look at. That's awesome. We will have people up there. Okay, so walking up to the baptistry, which our baptistry is really high. Um, yeah, and you got wood and stone and wood. Yeah, all kinds of craziness. But it's a common, you know, scenario in which we're going to need some communication. Um, yeah. And I feel like it's still crystal clear. Obviously, if I come in here now, I'm open air. There should be no interference. No. Close, close yourself up in the uh, changing room too. Yeah, that's where I was headed next. Yeah, I mean, so far, man, I'm. I'm, I'm not even kind of noticing. Yeah. I'm not noticing any change in like how your voice sounds. Right. Even even if you ch like you went to a different place and it's like I can still understand you, but I can tell it was a change. Right. I'm not noticing any of that. Yeah. I mean, I'm all the way back in one of the changing rooms now. Um, you know where I might be if I'm coordinating. Like, okay, hey, you go next. You go next. Um. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty pleased with that. Now this system is rated to work up to a thousand feet, hence why it's called the T1000. Now we just needed to get in and around our worship center, but I'm kind of curious just how far we can push this. Hey, look at that guy. Yeah. All right, so we're behind the auditorium and uh, do the Peter McKinnon move right there. We <laughs> take the camera and see how far we can go you know, and obviously there's like walls and things that are in between us. I've heard that lighting is important for videos. Is it? I've heard. Heard tell. Okay, so I'll say this. As I've been walking around, this starts to sink. It's lower, lower. I don't know. If you're, you're starting to, I'm losing you. As soon as we went through the, the portal. Yeah, I hear Dave again. Okay. When you can hear us. I can hear both of you now. Yeah, okay. so we're just past, so we're past the stairs. We're actually right where, um, we're by Yoda. Okay. That's where we are. So that's not quite a thousand feet, but I figured that a thousand feet was line of sight, nothing in the way anyway. Once you start adding in walls and wood and sheetrock between the base station and the packs, that's going to affect your range a lot. Ha, huh, I got farther. Yeah, you did. <laughs> but in a like practical sense, our use case is, I mean, ends at these stairs so yeah. so we've used the system for about two weekends now and it's been working out great it's been rock solid reliable the old system had these huge belt packs so having these super lightweight packs has been incredible the sound quality is great so it's easy to understand everyone but it also does a good job blocking out the room noise especially when the worship band is at full force there's only two things that we don't like about the system one is is that you don't hear yourself talking talking 
on the headset. So there's always that concern that you're trying to communicate to everyone else on the team and you don't realize that you're on mute because you're not getting that feedback of hearing your own voice in the headset. That might be something that can be addressed in a future firmware update. The other thing is how this talk button works on this pack. In order to talk and get it off of mute, you have to press and hold for a long time to be able to get the talk feature to work. And then to mute it, you actually do something different. You, you double tap to get that to go back to mute. The display does tell you if you're in talk mode or mute mode, but most people are gonna have it clipped to their clothing on a belt so you can't see it. But um, you also have the feature where with the headset, when you push this up, it actually mutes your microphone. And then when you pull it down here, there's a clicking noise. You can hear a little relay in there that actually puts it in talk mode. And so that is our solution to this, where this is mute and that's talk. This system is about $1,700, which might sound expensive if you've never bought a comm system before, but we were already doing the research on other systems when we got our hands on this system from Hollyland. And so knowing what I know, and now having my, my chance to put my hands on it and to put it to the test, I think that for what you get, $1,700 is very reasonable. So after testing it out and putting it through all of the paces, our team has decided to pull out the old comm system and we are now using the Hollyland Mars T1000 system exclusively for our team to communicate during Sunday morning services. We'll put links in the description down below where you can get more information and to find a place where you can get your hands on this system yourself. Well, I don't have my keys. Do you? Not my keys either. Hey, we should have a comm system where we could talk to someone and say, hey, get us our keys. Hey, keys. You ready? Sure. You could have caught that. You made no attempt. Yeah, there's like a three pound knife on my keychain. Yeah, I know there is, Cameron. That's 1,000% going in the video. Yeah, make sure it makes it, please. <laughs>